Hey, how y'all doing? We're back with more Alan Wake. Last time we found out exactly what's happening and what what happened at the very beginning of the game. It was very, very harrowing. Right, crows. So it looks like a blast disperses them. Out of here, nerd birds. I can't see shit because of the bush. There we go. All right. Oh no no no! Get out of here! Ah! The worst. I already don't like birds in real life, and I like them even less in video games. I am not a bird person. Right, Alessa? Alessa agrees. Alessa's more of a bird person, but that's because she'll eat them. Oh, man, I mean, if I could befriend a, a crow, that'd be the greatest thing ever. The site looked bad, but as far as I could tell, the wreck was empty. But I still don't like birds. They're just, like, they're very noisy and messy. My cat shits in a box. Most of the time. Sometimes she gets angry and, and shits where she shouldn't shit. And we have a good long talk about it, don't we? Don't we? Yes, we do. I mean, I like them both, but I do prefer cats because they're more independent. They, uh, they for the most part, tend to be better at personal space, whereas dogs will just launch right into you all the time, every time. Whereas cats are like, yeah, no, I want my space, and I'll come to you if I want you. Barry! Barry! Cats are also easier to take care of. I don't have to take Alessa outside ever Over here. to poop. There we go. You know when to make an entrance, Wake. We were ready to make like Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I have a different ending in mind. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. I knew you'd be all right. How's that? The Flaming Eye of Mordor. Weaver will meet us at the dam. But I'm gonna go up here for another cash. Alan Wake? Uh, Alan Wake is very... Doesn't do that much Twin Peaks referencing. Uh, I'm th I think you're thinking of De uh, Deadly Premonition, which is just basically Twin Peaks, the video game. This is very much a, a Stephen King and, you know, standard horror writer kind of stuff. Because they, they do a ton of name dropping throughout this game. It's just kind of like, yeah, all right. Okay, yeah, I know who that is. When you spend most of your night running up hills while a crazy bunch of demon hicks try to take your head off with an axe, you know your helicopter crash landed in Hot Springs. God damn it, Barry. Uh -huh. Oh, but it's dangerous out here. Oh, I should have kept that gym membership. I mean, maybe you don't want him to crap on your floor. 
I also don't want him to crap on your food. That'd be terrible. Yeah, go do what you need to do. Thanks for, thanks for the raid. Uh, also, uh, hey, Overfiend and uh, Enimusu. Appreciate you both being here. Hope you're having a great day. I super don't enjoy this thing. This enemy is obnoxious. Get out of here. I, I know, Barry. Barry. I know. There, it's all good, Barry. Much appreciated. Was that okay. it? Much Are appreciated. We safe? That was wow. I think we're okay. I mean, you're welcome. Hey, I... Al, I got a bad feeling. Let's keep our eyes open. Don't get hooked on that, or you'll get high on believing. <laughs> oh, should have. I should have kept that gym membership. Taken are filled with darkness. Ah, there's our good friend Copy hey, Thermos. Call the elevator. I'm keeping watch. I think I hear something moving around. Yeah, it's just me. What do we got in here? All right, some ammo. You know, you should probably not be using a shotgun from that far away. Because it's pretty ineffective. the one who's in danger here. Oh wow, that is bright. I mean, you just asked me to get in the elevator. Now I gotta hit a button? Jeez. So needy. We're almost there. There's an entrance into the dam at the top. What's the plan, Wake? Well, Weaver's crazy, but she's got something Zane left behind. Something to fix this. Gee, could you be a little more vague? Thomas, Zane, seriously? Might as well be Paul Bunyan or Bigfoot. Yeah, well, he was real. Just like Santa Claus. Let's be careful, okay? No. Oh, geez, I hate this. These things happen. All right, so uh, is there any any pages? Okay, There's a button over there that opens the door. Yes, there is. Before I do that, there's, clearly there's going to be a battle here. And there's no miasma, so got a little bit of leniency. Okay, there's nothing. Right. So we're near the well lit room. Hold to hold to open. Hold the button down so we can get in. Awesome. You could just duck under it, you know. Well tits. You guys go ahead and find Weaver. She should be in the dam now. I'll have to make it alone through the top. Okay, wait. Good luck. Don't get yourself killed. No promises. Okay, good care of Barry, wait. You just look after yourself. 
Alrighty. Shit. You gotta be kidding me. There we are. Down, boy. Ah, there's a manuscript page. Give me some of that. Thomas Zing knew he had to remove all that had made this horror possible, including himself. That was the only way to banish the dark presence he had unleashed and now looked at him through the eyes of his dead love. But he also knew that despite his best efforts, it might someday return. So even as he wrote himself and his work out of existence, he added a loophole as insurance, an exception to the rule. Anything of his stored in a shoebox would remain. Aha! Fill those plot holes in. Can you imagine the sheer amount of uh, electricity you'd need to power this thing? I guess that's why it's at the dam. Hydroelectronics. Okay, well, I guess fuck that then. God, birds. The worst. Okay, well, that room is up here. Outnumbered, the searchlight could even the odds. It sure could. So far, so good. So the key to using this effectively is you really just want to knock down their uh, their defense and then just blast them real quick. All right. Oh. Sure, be like that. Got him. Enough. You will go no further. Hey, Lord Tyrion, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a great day. Stop. Stop now. Oh, that's kind of very not good. So it's right above us. Oh. In we go. 
Ah, thermos. Some more bloom in here. Well done. I'm glad I was wrong. But it was a foolish chance to take. Don't worry about the noise. We're safe here. I have looked after the well lit room for many, many years now. There's no shadow in the well lit room. The power is fail safe and all the bulbs are numbered and changed regularly based on their make and model. Right. Barry's Christmas lights are basically the greatest thing. The ultimate defense. There's an old army base at Raid Cove Point, north of here. It was active during the Second World War. They operated here back then. They must have built this. Yes, they did. It's my place now. I like how nobody questions this. Take it, and I won't need to worry about the room anymore, because six of... 33 and 118 need changing soon, and I don't want to climb up the ladder to change them because it's very late, and I'm tired. And if you take it, I won't have to do that anymore. The page was autobiographical, a memory from my childhood. But I didn't write this. It was a page written by Thomas Zane. None of them were supposed to exist anymore. Alan, seven years old, would fight sleep to the bitter end. When he did sleep, he soon woke up, screaming, the nightmares fresh in his mind. One evening, his mother, sitting by his bed, offered him an old light switch. She called it the clicker, and flicking the switch would turn on a magical light that would drive the beast away. To imbue the talisman with all possible power, she added that it had been given to her by Alan's father. Alan never knew him, and anything of his took on mythical proportions in his mind. With the clicker firmly in his hand, Alan finally slept like a baby. Now, almost 30 years later, Alan thought of this. As he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, the clicker in his hand, he took a deep breath and jumped. My mind swirled. I'd given the clicker to Alice, yet it was here. Zane had written it into existence in a story I had written. I can get to her now. I can finish this. Previously on Alan Wake, I wrote a horror story that has come true. Thomas Zane did the same in the 70s. You will go no further. If I continue like the Dark Presence wants me to, the story I'm writing won't save Alice. It's a horror story. No one will survive. You knew Zane. Thomas Zane. You're the Lady of the Light in the song. He left something behind to help me. The clicker. Alan thought of this as he stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake. The clicker in his hand. He took a deep breath and jumped. I can get to her now. I can finish this. All right, folks. Oh, there you go. about to explode and the light hurt my eyes. I needed my sunglasses and painkillers to dull the pain. In I never one of got my around. finer moments of self-deception, I swore to quit drinking. We've all been there. I never got around to doing Quantum Break. 
Come on, Alan. There we go. Uh, the sunglasses made the world look bearable. Now I could keep my eyes open without feeling like a vampire in the sun. Blah. Hey, look at that. Some painkillers. Time to play some Max Payne. Isn't Quantum Break all about, like... The pills worked fast. The prospect of being awake started to seem bearable again. It was something about, like, uh, manipulating time? Or at least, uh... Alright, let's point out that this, this door is not flush. And that's just not, like... Why isn't there some glass here that, that like, this... Because this is pointless. Because all this water is just going to come spraying out to that... that spot there toilet paper nowhere near the toilet though and you should always have your toilet roll a little higher like probably around like where the top of the bowl is and uh, this bathtub looks tiny okay enough critiquing there There's we go a message waiting for me on the machine mm-hmm We could listen to the message, but we're going to check around the apartment and see if there's anything good. Door is locked. Door is locked. Come on, where's the thermos? Give us give us the thermos. I know you're hiding one. I think this is New York? Yeah, this is New York. It's, it's, it said New York. Ooh, look at that chunky boy. That's a sweet little chunky TV. Is it possible to make the game think it's pirated? Now, why would I want to do that? Okay, so they're not hiding any uh, any goodies. You have one new message. Ow! Are you still asleep? Wakey, wakey! You should have your show on your TiVo. If Alice wasn't too mad to record it, that she called me earlier and really chewed me out. Yeah, yeah, we went a little overboard last night. But parties are a part of this All right, let's see what this is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Harry Gallet Show. God, that resolution. Thank you, everybody. We have a great show tonight. I've been talking with the best-selling author, Alan Wake, about his new book, The Sudden Stop. Yeah, good read. Go buy it. No, no, it is a good read. Look, uh, I'm going to be honest here. Is that wise? No, I'm going to do it anyway. I got people who give me the lowdown on books. I'm a busy guy. But this one, I actually read from cover to cover. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan. Wow, thanks. Now, this might be a spoiler for those who haven't read the book yet. Based on the sales figures, the two people out there who haven't read the book yet. <laughs> but this last book is all about the death of the main character, the hard-boiled New York detective, Alex Casey. Now, there's been a lot of outrage about this. Why the hell did you kill Casey? What the hell were you thinking, man? Good riddance. <laughs> no, seriously, though. Seven years and six books is a long time. He was a gloomy guy to spend all your working hours with, and it was a good run. But it's time to explore new things. My next book will be a departure from the old for me. You selfish bastard, always thinking of yourself. Well, you've certainly given us a lot of entertainment over the years. Now that you mention it, Casey was a gloomy guy. Never had much luck with his love life with the ladies. Was that autobiographical in any way? Yeah, no kidding. Casey's lady friends tended to die on him. With Casey, it was all about his pain. No, nothing autobiographical about that. I'm a happily married man. My wife is my muse. <laughs> well, congratulations. That's great to hear. So, how's the publicity tour been treating you? Good. Great. But I gotta say, I'm glad to be back home in New York. Well, you've certainly been on the news a lot lately. Lots of parties and, um... You got into a fight with some paparazzi. Oh, man. Well, that guy was really in my face. I lost my temper. I know that wasn't cool. 
Uh, you are famous for that temper. <laughs> well, I did also write several books. <laughs> well, your latest novel is called The Sudden Stop, and it's in bookstores now. Go get it. That means the two of you out there who haven't bought it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. I want to thank all our guests for the evening. Alan Wake, Sam Lake. Once more, do the face for a Sam. I forgot about that. At least I've been funny. I told myself I could live with that. I didn't say anything stupid about what you want to know. Okay, Grumpy. You want to ask them something? Are you going to start with me about drinking now? You know what? I should have followed her advice, but suddenly I was angry. Oh, all right, I guess we're not going to finish that monologue. What? Now you can't even talk to me? Well, this morning I was angry because you said you'd be home at midnight and you showed up at 7 a.m. and passed out in mid-sentence. Now I'm over it. Are you angry? This goddamn tour. It's gotten out of hand. Oh, honey. It's almost over, right? We can get back to normal. Then you can start writing again. I'm sorry, honey. Alan, you're not thinking straight. Just take a shower and go back to bed, huh? Yeah, you're right, honey. I'm sorry. Once this is over, let's go away together. A vacation. Just you and me. Some peace and quiet. I love that I made some Max Payne jokes and I brought in Sam Lake to do his Max Payne face. Somehow, the clicker was the key to the cabin. I had to return to Cauldron Lake to save Alice. I'm going back to the lake to finish this. I'm going to write an ending to the story in the manuscript on my own terms, to make it all right. But why can't you just write it here? The last page is still in the typewriter. I need to read it first. Everything needs to be just right. Zane tried to cut some corners, and it didn't end well. Okay, ready when you are. I'm sorry, Sarah, but I need to do this alone. Barry, take her gun. Miss Weaver, close the door when I leave. Good luck, Al. See you later. Sunny. I had flicked the switch of the clicker. Had it done this? I didn't stop to question it. I had to take advantage of the sunlight to get to the lake. On Zane's page, I had stood on the rim of Cauldron Lake, about to use the clicker. That's where I was headed. Surrounded by the beauty of the Pacific Northwest landscape, it was hard not to let doubt creep in one last time. I could still chalk everything up to a dream, a delusion. I had enough imagination to make up something like this, having been in the cabin all this time, trapped in a story inside my head, gone mad from grief over Alice's death like Hartman had claimed. There would be no way of knowing. I told myself it didn't really matter. My course was set. So let's see it. Let's see what happens down here. It's dark. I think I'm making progress. This is the opposite direction of where the game wants me to go, so I'm I'm attempting it. Looks like it's blocked off. Very much so. What a great run. But it's nice that there's no enemies in here, despite there being, you know, absolute darkness.
Okay, so we just need to... Oh, hey, there's uh, some more uh, advertising. Verizon. Well, we got our coffee thermos, so we should be fine. On we go. Why do you turn your lights on in the daytime? It's not a good camera with driving, sadly. More energizer advertising. I make a pit stop, look for any more collectibles. I see flashing. Batteries. Okay, so just batteries. Alright, fine. I was hoping for something more, but... Sure. And we got a checkpoint. Okay. Well, that was not super helpful. What about here? Anything here at this logging site? I'm going to burn all the daylight looking for goodies. Nothing. Yeah, this is like a bunch of pages. Hey, Frag Havoc Gaming, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a great day. And who are you calling Stud, Stud? I like that, though. Stud Waffle. Good old Deer Festival. a link between us always would be i could feel its presence again getting closer really didn't want me to use the car <laughs> ah I will kill your wife So much for the clicker being helpful. I mean, why don't I just click it again? Ah, your bird. The dark presence was no longer trying to capture the writer so he could create the ending it wanted. The writer knew too much. He was too strong. And he carried a weapon left behind by Thomas Zane, something that could hurt it. Now, the darkness was doing everything in its power to simply stop the writer from ever reaching Cauldron Lake and the dark place it came from. Hey, Malik, how you doing? Appreciate you being here. Hope you're having a great day. Good to see all of my favorite people here. Well, we've got a car now, so... Eat shit, nerds! Smashing! Oop. I don't like the camera while you're in the car because once the once you turn the camera to a certain angle 
it uh, just spins back around to the other side. Like an asshole. Oh! Okay, so we've got a lot of junk on this bridge, which means we're probably going to hit some uh, poltergeist. Yeah, poltergeist. I'm fine with that. I'm not fine with that. So it looks like those pl planks just, like, they get possessed and then they fall. No, you can't stop on a dime on those cars. I got a lot of batteries, but I don't want to waste them here. Speaking of... I don't... I'm fine, whatever. Ah! Terrain! Oh, God! This is super not good. Uh, let's head over here for this light. Oh. Angry vehicle, angry. Got a flare for our efforts. Cool. Sorry about the lighting. It's just super dark in here.
And uh, they only give us a flare, which is kind of bullshit. So we're going to switch out. Oh, yeah, all right, so fences can't be run over. Cool. Very cool. And I can't look behind me. Okay, that... What? I'm sorry. Alright, fine. We're gonna huff it. Get out of here, spool. <laughs> Spools out. Ah! Yeah, there's, um... The driving in this game... Still better than Deadly Premonition. But the physics are pretty miserable. Yeah, it's it's very much like with Duke Nukem Forever. They just they added this driving mechanics in and they're not they don't add anything to the game. And they're not fun to actually use. Oh! Oh, okay, this sucks. Um, forget this shit. That was kind of what I was going for, but I couldn't let- oh. Ah! Making progress. It's slow, but it's progress. All right, come on back here. I got a surprise for you. Whoop. Oh, hey now. Who? Trying to get all fancy with my shots. Hey, another manuscript page. The bottom of Cauldron Lake was a graveyard of things the lake had claimed in one way or another over the decades. The dark presence brought them up in its wake, scattering the rotten waterlogged hull of an old boat here, the remains of a long ago crashed airplane there, trees shattered under the impacts, the earth groaned, and didn't even notice. Same. Yeah, just fill me up. Buttercup. 
All right, another driving segment. Let's do this. Another Verizon advertisement. They really got their money's worth off of those advertisements. I was going to say, that was a very short driving sequence, but... Ah, manuscript page. Let's grab this shit. Come on, Alan, get out of the car. It's not that hard. And... In the end, Barry wasn't going to shoot Sarah. They both knew that. Once she had no chance of catching up to Wake, Barry gave up the gun and sat down on the floor, shielding his face from the merciless glare of the well-lit room. I don't think I'm ever going to see him again, he said in a weak voice. Sarah didn't have it in her to be mad at him. Besides, he was probably right. They've used driving in a few sequences. It's mostly been uh, set dressing. And then for this, it's just to add to the tension. It's just, eh. So how do I... Uh, okay, we gotta go up here. All right, fine, we'll just ditch the damn car, whatever. Seems to be what it wants me to do. This fence around, but we can't bust it down. Where do you want me to enter? At least everything's nice and quiet. We have some time to reflect on. Fuck you. Also, I don't feel like driving, outside of, like, a racing game, having driving in linear segments doesn't mean anything. Like, it's it's pointless. I always, I always view driving as something you do in an open world type game. And there's, there's a lot of games that try to, you know, force vehicle driving in limited sections, and they're never fun. Uh, looking at you, Headhunter. So I don't know why they included them in this. Because there are some large sections that involve driving, but they're just not... Oh. Oh, okay. Back into the car. It's another road. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you stop your turn. I think that was just to get that page. And this is the turn off. Yeah, this is the turn off. Off we go. Okay, so I saw an arrow. Alright, nothing in here. There should be a cache nearby back here. Anything around here? Nope. So we're just looking for the cash. Looks like it's gonna be back there. Good check. Check our little nooks and crannies. It's a nice word, nooks and crannies. Especially cranny. Like, what exactly is a cranny? I don't know, but it's it feels nice to say. In fact, mother little. I am trying to get people to say the word cranny, and you're being an asshole. Okay. So, so yeah, chat, what I'd like you to do right now is out loud say the word cranny. 
That's with a C. It's a nice word. It just rolls off the tongue. It has that nice, delightful CR sound. That cr, cr. Cranny. Nooks and crannies. All right, well, it's, it seems like we should be able to get up. I think we're going to come back down that way. I know you like granny crannies. Surprisingly, they're called grannies. So yeah, hunting rifle is actually a much better weapon than the shotgun because it basically a one-hit kill. Whereas shotgun takes quite a few shots. It's about two, two to three. We'll probably, we find more ammo for shotgun. Thermos! We definitely find more ammo for the shotgun than we do for the, the hunting rifle, but we get, we get more kills with the hunting rifle than we will with the shotgun. Yes. All right, so it looks like they're stocking me up. Seems like we've got a bit of a fight coming up. There's another set of cans to knock over. If, if this game had, if this, uh, if the storefront had achievements, it doesn't. most dangerous game, but we're not hunting Bengal tigers. I hear somebody clumping around. Where are they? <clears throat> They're clumping around inside. Oh, there they come. But it doesn't matter, because we hit the light. Epic! Not really. Okay, it's time for the junkyard. Manuscript page. Zane cut its heart out, but it didn't die. The thing that wore Barbara's face kept crooning sweet nothings sugar-laced with poison. He put on the suit, untied the monster from the chair. The thing in his arms thrashed weakly, but he held fast. He stepped outside, off the pier, and into the dark water, a sinking pinprick of light descending toward a bottom that never came. Game keeps track of what? God, just all of the bloom ever, please. Ah, okay. Damn you! We've got 81 of 106. We found 72 of 100 thermoses. We only found 16 of 30 chests. Uh, we've, we're missing one, one radio, one TV. I don't know what they mean by signs. Alarm clocks. Cardboard standings. I think those are for American Nightmare. I think, the, I think this has the uh, expansion. If this has the expansion, we are totally playing, uh, playing through it. Falls! Oh, 
Ultra Balls. That's what we call the good shit. I thought American Nightmare, uh, eh, whatever, I don't care. If, it's, if they're released together, they're, they're released together, that's all that really matters. And I'll be happy with it. I mean, this is fairly campy all on its own. So I'm interested to see how much campier it can get. I mean, it's great that these wooden fences can handle a 20-ton uh, vehicle slamming into them and not, like, even... Not even, like, a splinter. It's just the, the finest... American engineered wooden guardrails here in uh, Bright Falls. When I told Barry my plan back in the well lit room, I'd acted as if I knew what I was doing. I didn't. I was operating on the shifting logic of a dream. I had to fight my way to the lake through the horrors of the night. I had to flick an old battered light switch imbued with childhood magic. I had to write a happy ending to a horror story. I had to save my wife from the dark prison she was being held in. All of this made perfect sense. Down we go. All right, We're stocked up. Let's push this bad boy. Get out of the way. There we go. Don't half-ass it either. You just push that sucker all the way in. We got a couple of lights hooked up here, so there's going to be some shit about to go down. I mean, we might as well make use of this gun while we've got it and then switch over to... Oh, yeah, I remember this. I very much remember this. never give her to you. Fair enough. Oh. Is that all you got? Oh, no. Oh, okay. So this dude is super powered. Yeah, 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 Leatherface. Oh, so that's not doing shit. Okay. There we go. Is that it? You want more?
Got any uh, more of them thermoses? I think I beat the big baddie of this section. So yeah, depending on uh, if this has all the content, we'll just play the whole damn thing. There's one just hiding in the back. Oh, there you are. They're waiting for me to get off of the, uh... Shit! Oh, there's two of them. Oh, okay. So this could be slightly problematic. Ooh. All right. Now that we've only got three rounds left in our hunting rifle... You piece of shit. It's right there. Uh, I thought I was being clever. Like, oh no, I could go use up this gun and then go back and get the other gun. No, you can't, dumbass. Uh, looks like all of these are just, like, hollowed-out buildings. Like, there's just nothing left. Uh, some armor in there. So, now it's just to get, get through this section. Manuscript. The dark place I found myself in was unlike anything I could ever have imagined. It wasn't solid. It flowed. It was conceptual and subjective. For someone else, an artist in another field, it would have been very different. I could sense the story of the manuscript all around me. The words and ideas floating in the air, poised to become real. I mean, the writing, the writing in this is hit and miss. Like, there's some, there's some good writing in this, and then there's just some that's like, oh my god, it's super hackneyed, and I can't stand here. So it's, it's, it's an interesting game. Down we go. Um. Right. Yeah, we don't want to drop down there. That would be a terrible idea. No. Go away. I could see Mirror Peak in the distance. That's where Cauldron Lake was. They do like their winding trails, though. Alan. Alright, so we're just maxed out on regular ammo. Uh. Here we go. Fun time! This is terrifying, to be honest. Oh, 
Alright, that's one group gone. So now it's just catching. Oh. Okay, that's that's our ride. There there was our ride. Wait. Oh, there's a ladder here. Easy to miss that. Sorry for that. Birds are angry. There. We lost nerds. Faster, Alan, faster. Use your wormy little writer's arms. I'm very glad I did that. All right, that looks like a checkpoint I missed. So we're just gonna hop on down. It's all good, because we're just gonna heal back up. I wonder what the point of that was. It didn't lead to anything. All right, well, there's, aha, a cache. And, uh, you know, Alan. Exactly. Could have written myself to be a, a muscular uh, strong boy, but instead I, I'm a wormy writer with a tweed jacket with leather elbow patches. Also, I'm sorry, but if you have elbow patches, uh, it is legal to uh, dump your books and stuff you in a locker. In, in fact, you you as an American are obligated uh, by flag law. And I, I'm not making this up. There is a thing called flag law. And that, that indicates the most patriotic things you can do. One of which is obviously, you know, kill Nazis. And then the other is, uh, you know, dumping the books of somebody wearing a tweed jacket with uh, leather elbow patches. I don't make these laws, folks. I, I just, I gleefully reinforce them. I don't know about you, Music Sting, but I got a thermos. God. Asshole birds. Asshole birds. I think the bird cluster goes away after you deal enough damage to it in, like, a certain amount of time. But the miasma is here, which means that uh, some Taken are going to spawn. Hello. Okay. All right. I, you know, I'm fine with that. That's okay. Apparently when I popped that flare, it was enough to kill it instantaneously. Those birds sound a lot like cats. Just saying. We got plenty of flare gun ammo. And we're topped off on ammunitions. All right, what's next? What's next? I don't. Oh, there's Mirror Peak. So we're close. I had totally forgotten that Alan Wake did have uh, DLC. I'm sorry, expansions. Remember when they were called expansions? And they're like full games? I miss those days. 
Well... Maybe fuck you too. This is a very rude boy. You don't need to keep doing that sting video game. So if I don't kill him, he's gonna annoy me. There we are. We don't need to do get rid of all of them. those nerds out for now. Yeah, they're giving me plenty of ammo, so it looks like we're heading into the we're heading into the finale. and then we've got one of these fast boys. Darkness Dorothy, huh? Oop, hey! Gotcha, nerd. There. Got me playing like an asshole. I am good, thank you. Hey, burning tree. Reminds me of Woodstock. And I s stop throwing stuff. I want my, uh, I want my, uh, give me that. Thermos. It sounds like there's two of them? feel how does it feel beyond your ground it's like the only impression I can do is Bob Dylan And Dim Light Dylan. Yeah, see it, Bob Dylan. Got shit. Ah. Ah. And yep. Got it.
Alright, so now it's just dumping cars. Son of a bitch! Dumping cars on us. Alright. This... Yeah, this is the part where it just starts hurling shit. From the depths of the lake. And it's doing a, a terrible job of hitting me. What was that, like one out of ten objects? Ow. That is a weird obstacle that I don't understand why they put in the game. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a massive monster tantrum. And we found another. I don't know if I've ever maxed out on flares and flashbangs, but. Sure, we'll find out if it's possible. Oh, we got uh, more shoddy ammo. The darkness controls the Taken. Yeah, that. So, like, that kind of plot graffiti is unnecessary. <clears throat> so, let's head. Oh, no, there's no downstairs. Never mind. All right. I thought there might be a downstairs with some goodies, but I was wrong. It's just going to be the outside with some baddies. Ha ha ha. See what I did there? I shouldn't have jumped. Uh-oh. Chainsaw Boy is back. Um, okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, what now, mofo? You ain't got shit on me. You didn't expect me to have cinematic cam, did you? Whoa. Looks like they got killed by the uh, lightning. Or lightning, what the hell's wrong with me? The electricity. This isn't Pontypool, Tyrion. Also, you should watch Pontypool. Pontypool is a very, very good horror movie. Right, I guess it wants me to go up. God, the bloom lighting in this game is just vicious and hurtful. After Zane had gone, I stood alone in the shifting dream that was the dark place. I had to find a way to the cabin. I had written myself a way through this place in the manuscript. I followed the idea of a path. I had written myself across the ocean that blocked my way, and with that, there was a bridge to the island beyond. The idea of the cabin flickered in the underwater darkness. I willed the cabin to be real, and it was. I really do recommend Pontypool. If you want a, a very unique movie, horror movie, hey, we found an item limit, 20 flares. If you want a unique horror movie that takes the concept of zombies and flip, flips it around in a very interesting way, uh, Pony Pool is the movie you want to watch. It was so good we featured it twice on the uh, Night Terror Fest uh, for the first and second years. Now.
Why do you keep showing that one image? Hold on now. Okay, now you're being an asshole. Just in time. Do as you're told. Maybe you should try, like, actually hitting me. Idiot. That is very annoying. Down we go. I don't think this is what you're supposed to do with a tornado, but okay. You're right, I can't. Shit. I mean, it's alright to play. I think it's got some of the best controls in a third person game. So this this boss is kind of sucky. We just have to keep launching flares in until the stuff goes away. part is getting your shots to uh, last long enough so they can uh, do damage. I had to get right into its heart to hurt it. There we go. Now we're making some headway.
Damn it! You fucking suck! You suck so much! I don't think I can break those. No, can't. Okay. I pressed the jump button! Some of it we can hit, and some of it we can't, it seems. God! Shit! Playing terribly. I am my worst enemy. Finally! But yeah, you have to jump to that platform in order to actually harm it. Don't drop the flare gun. Just another nightmare. No. Everything's fine. You're home. It wasn't a dream. Everything's fine. Turn the lights on. Turn the lights on! Shh, baby. The power's out. There's no light. Come back to bed and I'll make you forget all about your fear in the dark. My fear? It's your fear. Why aren't you afraid? You're not Alice. Turn the lights on now. Where's the clicker? What did you do with it? Alan? You're scaring me now. Come back to bed. Have you taken your pills? Do you want me to call Dr. Hartman? Can't get past her. I read your manuscript. It's brilliant. Departure is your best work yet. 
You're a genius. I'm so proud of you. Come back to bed. We'll talk more about it in the morning. Come back to bed, Alan. Come back to bed, Tom. Boom! Daylight. You must find your way to the cabin. It stands in your way. It won't let you pass. It has no heart. It's filled with darkness. You must fill its heart with light. How can I when it has no heart? Don't mind him. He's Mr. S Your friends will meet him when you're gone. Use the clicker. Now we can make things real. So I think we take take damage if we touch the word. But we can make ourselves a coffee thermos. Bird, fly away. This part of the game is actually pretty cool. I'm leaving you. What? I'm leaving you, Alan. I met someone. I'm in love with someone else. Alice? No, what do you say? You can't. You don't love me. I hate you. You don't even love yourself. All you do is torture yourself with work you can't do anymore. No, I, I love you more than anything in the world. You're, you're my you. I'm not. Who are you? What have you done with my Alice? Alice? What are you doing? Put the light back on! What are you doing, Alice? Stop! Put the light back on! It wasn't true. Nothing like that had ever happened. Oh, so I guess if I activate the bridge, it deactivates that, uh... That telephone pole. You're not my Barbara! Tom, let me go. I promise to be good. Please, untie me, you naughty boy. I will help you watch your next time. I will love you forever. No, you're not Barbara Jagger. I made a terrible mistake. I should have never written you back. You came back wrong. Your heart is filled with darkness. Put that knife away, Thomas. Put it down. My heart is filled with darkness. I cut it out. Ah! Ah! I took you back to the depths of paper. Ah! Your husband refused to do as he was told. All he had to do was write what I wanted him to write. Now it's too late. It's his fault. You'll stay here forever. The whole section's really cool. Now you will never get her back. older than you. Older than your first work of art. I will find a new face to wear. Ah, someone else to dream me free.
I could feel Alice's presence close by. I understood what I had to do now. I knew how to write the ending to Departure. There's light and there's darkness. Cause and effect. There's guilt and there's atonement. But the scales always need to balance. Everything has a price. That's where Zane had gone wrong. There's a long journey through the night back into the light. And that is playing only in one ear, and that is really annoying the hell out of me. But that's the uh, the base game for Alan Wake. There's still more content to go. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Dang. Ground control to Major Tom. Eight, seven, six. Commencing countdown engines on. Three, two, check ignition. Two. 
story, given that Thomas Zane managed to write in Alan Wake. So, in a way, it seems that Zane wrote Alan Wake in order to uh, have him come to Bright Falls in order to do what Thomas Zane couldn't do. And that is, that's indicated by hi the uh, him giving the clicker uh, in the Bright Room. So it has that unique, you know, story within a story, sort of weird internal meta going on that's really, really... It, it, it's done so well. Um... We've, we had our little to-dos about the various Night Springs uh, snippets that they had scattered around. Some of them were good, some of them were just downright stupid. Uh, and overall, like, just, it has collectibles, but they're, they're interesting to pick up. I like the thermos. Just the thermos in general, the idea of it. It's just, it's a neat little item. It matches, it matches the, the aesthetic of the game, and, you know, it has some purpose to finding the manuscript pages which isn't just a collectible but gives you the story and and it actually is it's a plot item but it's not necessary to pick up and that's what makes that such a unique idea is that here's a collectible that is important to the story this is the actual thing that he's writing in the story you can pick up the pages and you get to read what's about to come up and happen and even when it happens it still kind of catches you off guard so, like, the, the way that this game was designed and written, uh, pretty much really, really, really good. Uh, it could have done without the driving and the driving sections. They added absolutely nothing to the game. Um, it's definitely a lot more fun to play on easy than it is on the harder difficulties, because I remember playing on a harder difficulty and just being miserable, because stuff takes way too damn long to kill. And some sections became downright unplayable because of it. Uh, clearly the best part of the game is still the uh, old gods of... Uh, the concert section is the best part. Oh, what else? Uh, sound design's really good. Uh, it's definitely aged visually, uh, with the, the, uh, face, face rigging just not matching anything. What else is there to say? Uh, I mean, I'm glad I got, I got to play this again, because this is a fantastic game. And I'm very happy that y'all joined me for it for this, and I, I'm sure you'll be interested in joining me for the uh, the next batch of content that was uh, developed for this game. I've never played the rest of this. I've only played this base game, so I know nothing about the extra content or the uh, expansion or anything like that. So it'll be completely brand new territory for me. Be interested to see this as a movie. This is one of those games that would adapt to a movie extremely well because it's pretty much already written. And now you, all you need to do is just sort of translate most of, you know, the, the non-super gamey sections into, uh, into an actual, like, story. And you don't have to change a damn thing about the, about the story. You can just transplant it straight into a movie. Also, this was written by Sam Lake, which is why Sam Lake was there. He, he, uh, was, he was, basically, he was Max Payne. Uh, he's also a games writer, a game developer, and, uh, it was just fun seeing him, uh, I don't remember that, which is what makes that even funnier to me. It's like, hey, I'm going to cameo in my own game and do the dumb, goofy thing that I, I did for a different game. That's all I'm going to do. 
It's an odd Hitchcockian thing to do. Except Hitchcock usually was in the background, and you, if, you, if you weren't paying attention, you'd miss him. But I believe Hitchcock cameoed in all of his films. Also, unlike um, Quentin Tarantino, who makes himself very front and center when he cameos, which, I don't know, I, I've never really liked that. It's it's good if it's if it's somebody else cameoing, but if it's like you cameoing in your own work, you should do it more subtly. Or funny. You know, like Stan Lee. Stan Lee's cameos in his in the movies uh, based on his works were always good because they, they had fun with, they had fun with him. Quentin Tarantino just puts himself in there because, you know, he wants to be an actor, but he can't cut it. So he does that. Fred Berman was Barry. So Il Ilka Vili was uh, Alex or Alan Wake. Drama consultation? What exactly is that? It's amazing to see how many people are needed to make something. Oh yes, one of the lesser known Wahlbergs, Mikhail. God damn it, Funky. No, no, I wouldn't, Funky. No, I wouldn't. You do put the lime in the coconut, and then you drink them both together. So a bunch of these are just songs you can hear on the jukebox. God, they got a li lot of licensed music in this. Okay, so that was that wasn't a uh, cover. That was the proper space oddity. They had a Depeche Mode song in this game. I believe they actually intended this to be a series. Bam! And right on time. So that brings us to the end. So uh, let's see. Huh. I don't see anything for the... Uh, the DLC, so I have to look that up. But uh, for now, that is where we're going to call it. Thank you for coming by and watching. And uh, thanks to everybody who worked on Alan Wake. This is a fantastic game. Definitely one of the top top horror games to have come out uh, in a long in a long time. You know, since it came out. Um, 
still stands in, in my tops. Um, but uh, that being said, that like I said, that's where we are going to call it. So thank you all so much for coming by and watching. And I will see you on the next one. Later.